Hi there, it's me again, Pastor Butch and Rilly, and welcome to Digital Gospel, a 30-minute word of encouragement from the Bible and here in Community Christian Center. Today, I'm in Bantayan Island, Santa Fe, Panyang Resort. I just want to take this opportunity to say hi and hello to all my family, my friends, my parents in Mignanilla, and members of PTC, or Pickup Truck Club, and different biker groups here in Cebu like MSCP, XRCPI, XR Riders, Real Bros, Outsider MC Mactan Chapter, Watch Enthusiast, Rolex Club, MRP PNP or Moral Recovery Program, and Kesmic, Kadaogan Samaktan Eagles Club Spartans, and Kesmic, Kadaogan Samaktan Eagles Club Centurions. And the members of Community Christian Center, our Senior Core Associate Pastors, and our Senior Pastor, Bishop Edgar L. Bantigi and Reverend Edna R. Bantigi. I'd also like to greet all our friends, our pastors all over the Philippines of Christ Faith Fellowship, and Brother Mike Hudson, and Brother Mike Chua, and Brother Steve Sagmon. I hope that you will enjoy tonight's episode. God bless you always. Yeah. 
Good evening everyone, I am back and it's good to be back. I've been away for the past one month, one month or so. I've been away due to the fact that I had my eye surgery and I was advised by my doctor, Dr. Young Larasabal, to take things easy for the next three to four weeks. And so I want to also thank him for a successful operation and for helping me out. Also, nurses, uh, I hope if you're watching this, thank you very much for helping me out. I'm so blessed and God is so good because um, he has provided for me, uh, for all my friends and my family who have prayed and give their words of encouragement. Thank you very much. And I'm so blessed and excited to be able to share once again here in Digital Gospel. I'm now on my 60th episode. Wow. And God is certainly good. I also would like to say thank you very much, Pastor E. Barbajo Agosto, for taking the place um, in my behalf. You've been doing it for the past four episodes, and I'm so thankful for taking the initiative, for taking time in talking to other church members to help you with uh, the digital gospel. And I'm so blessed that you use your life to be used by God, and thank you so much. And to more projects, hopefully in the future. Also for the four young people, Bro Dindin, Jesse, Joshua, and Nieva, for giving your talents for the Lord in singing. I'm so blessed. And thank you for the initiative that you have also done to give your talents for the Lord. And I'm so blessed by it. Thank you and continue uh, to walk in faith. Be safe and God bless you always. And I would like to begin with a prayer. So let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful evening that you've given to us. Thank you, Lord, for a great day. The weather was so good, and everyone that we had uh, acquainted this morning, that we had a good time in fellowship. Thank you, Lord, for a very successful time with different life groups, dear God. Lord, I pray and I thank you, dear God, for our church members who are out there, dear God, who are listening, and to everyone that is watching this digital cast. I pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless them, their God, in these times of challenges, their God. Lord, be with them. Lord, I pray, Lord, for your word to be magnified this evening. Lord, that we can learn something and we may be blessed by it. Thank you, Lord, for revealing to us your plans, your will, and your purpose in us. That, Lord, that we will continue to walk by faith with you, their God. Help us, Lord, in the different challenges that we are facing right now. And we dedicate our life to you because you alone are worthy of all praise. Thank you, Father. Bless your word tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. This evening, I'll be talking to you about the story of being thankful. I know with the situation that we are having right now with vaccines and this pandemic and these different challenges that we have, this Delta coronavirus and whatever variant that is right now and what is to come, and I hope there won't be no more variant, this will be the end, but we have always to accept the fact that, that it is what it is and we have to do things and we have to do what we can to survive. and. Um, we may say to you may say to me that pastor why should I be thankful that I'm in this situation right now I'm having uh, problems with my health I'm having problems with my finances but the point that you are still alive is something to be very thankful to God with and so this story um, um, I like to share to you is about the life of Joseph and before I read uh, the story I just want to quote this verse in the Bible in Psalms 100 verse 4 and it says 
Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. My friends, I don't know what situation that you're in right now. You may be in a situation wherein you may not be grateful or you may not be thankful for the things that is happening around you or with your friends and your family. And things have been really tight in our businesses, in our workplace. But um, in this few moments, acknowledge the fact that the life that we have is something that we should be thankful for. Uh, we may not have what we desire or we wish that our life will be back to normal. But it may or may not be. But the point that we are still alive, the point that I'm still alive, I'm thankful. Because... I live each day as it happens. Um, gone are the days that you... I, I told my wife a couple of weeks back that life before the pandemic was about planning for the next vacation, planning on the things that we want to buy or the things that we want to go and travel. And sometimes now, uh, life is all about survival. Life is about getting past one day at a time. And... No matter what happens, trust always in the Lord. That's all I can say. Be positive in the things that you're going through. You may be sick right now. And I pray that you will uh, pick yourself up and you will receive God's miracle tonight. And just have faith. Believe in God. And He will be able to uh, elevate you from that situation that you're in. Now, the story of Joseph is very inspirational. Because it is an example of a person who, who dreamed the impossible dream. And he dreamed that he can rise up from all his brothers. And if, uh, if you know the story of Joseph, Joseph was a dreamer. He was a young kid, young boy who had, just like you and me, who has inspiration, who has lots of desires in life. And like you and me, he's got some bullies in his life. And sad to say, his bullies were his own brothers. And if you look at the life of Joseph, he was sold as a slave. I don't know about you, but we were not sold as a slave. Or our current situation may, may say to us that we are slaves to our work, to our business, to our responsibilities, to our mortgages, to our credits, to our obligations. But... Label it the way you want to label it. But Joseph was sold as a slave. And he was tossed from left to right. He was put in jail. And he, he, had, uh, he was really good. And God um, allowed that gift of translating dreams. And he interpreted dreams from very successful uh, government officials. And in his life... He was also as human as us. And he was tempted even by Potiphar's wife. How many temptations have we uh, overcome for the past couple of days? And Joseph was no different. He was imprisoned. And at the end of the day, he was the second in command to Pharaoh. And um, if you have time uh, in your personal devotion or in your meditation, try to look up Genesis chapter 40, 41. And you will see the story of Joseph in a more uh, convenient or comfortable manner for you to be able to uh, really enjoy the story. These are just um, sm small points that we can get because I only have 20, 26 minutes of your time. But kindly read that in your own time and you will be blessed by the story of uh, Joseph. And I would like to read this uh, small couple of verses which for me brought... Uh, a smile to my face and it's something that if this can happen to Joseph it can also happen to us or to me it says here in Genesis 41 verses 41 to 44 and it says so Pharaoh said to Joseph I hereby put you in charge of the whole land of Egypt 42 then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his finger and put it on Joseph's finger he dressed him in robes of fine linen and put a gold chain round his neck. 43. He had him ride in a chariot as his second in command. 
and people shouted before him, Make way! Thus he put him in charge of all of the whole land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, but without your word no one will lift hand or foot in all Egypt. God has blessed him in a circle of influence that he is now untouchable. An uh, ordinary boy became second in command in Egypt. Now how, how radical is that? And if we look at our lives, we can be mere ordinary people. We are just ordinary men and women trying to make it through the day. But we all have desires. We all have dreams. We all have passions. We all have uh, things that we look up to and we want to achieve in life. But one thing that we can uh, reflect in the life of Joseph, despite many challenges that he had and uh, many temptations that, me, that he overcome, that he had a relationship with God. And that is very important, brothers and sisters, that we have a relationship with Jesus Christ so that we can be able to attain our daily goals, even our long-term goals. Our situation is just temporary. But what we desire is something permanent, and that is to seek the will of God. Now, Joseph's life was a blessed life because he actually created a change to his family. His family did not want him. His brothers were envious about him. Nobody liked his revelations of his dreams. And little did they know that those dreams were the revelations of God in his future. Now, it's very important that we have an open mind and an open heart and an open spiritual eyes to be able to see that the revelations that God has in store for us. That's why it's very important that we remain positive despite our negative situations because we are all built for plans and purpose. And it is very important that we are very sensitive to know the will of God in our lives. The things that happen in our lives, maybe it may be bad, but there's always a reason behind it. Sometimes we question ourselves, Lord, why am I in this situation? Why am I being hurt? Why am I having in pain? Why am I going through these trials? But sometimes, like I say to a lot of people, that the things that are happening in our lives are a reason for God to let us know and to remind us to call upon Him. Sometimes we are so preoccupied and so busy with things that we think that we alone can do or we alone is knowledgeable about to overcome it but we forget who has given us the intellect and the wisdom that that's only from Jesus Christ and so he allows these challenges to come to our lives so that we can seek him we can pray we can ask his guidance because the moment that we are sick we have fever and we have colds and we are are going through trials in life. Diba makaampo ta? Diba makapahinuklod ta sa mga lessons that we have learned? And these challenges brings us closer to God. So, in the situation that you're going through right now, it is just a process wherein you need to be reconnected with God. Do not allow yourself to be separated from God. These challenges will bring you closer to God. And when you allow Him to to give you that that miracle that blessing your your life will be a lot better just look at the positive things in this negative situation all right now in his story it shares about the promises and blessings from the very beginning of the life of Joseph he had really suffered a lot from being sold to being persecuted and i tell you it's not a, an easy life uh, that he went through but the Lord has never left him because he remained humble he remained with the Lord and he allowed God's presence in his life so whatever struggles that he may have faced God was with him and God has has something in store for him these blessings and if we think about it it can also happen to us if we're going through these trials the Lord has blessings and promises that is waiting for us at the end of these uh, sacrifices. 
Now in Genesis chapter 45 verses 9 to 13, allow me to read it to you. And I want you to picture this out uh, uh, about the story of Joseph. Now verse 9, now hurry back to my father and say to him, this is the time when he created a drama to entrap Benjamin, his youngest brother. And he wanted to give payback to his brothers who had sold him. But after after that uh, role play, let's just say, he wanted to share to them that he was thankful. He was grateful that his brothers sold him because he wouldn't be where he is or he was at that time to be able to save people during that famine. And because of Joseph, everyone was able to survive the seven years of famine. And so this is the time when he told his brothers to go home and bring his father. And verse 9 again, Now hurry back to my father and say to him, That is what is your son Joseph said. God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, don't delay. You shall live in the region of Goshen and be near me. You, your children and grandchildren, your flock hurts and all you have. Verse 11, I will provide for you there because five years of famine are still to come. Otherwise, you and your household and all who belong to you will become destitute. Verse 12, you can see for yourself and so you can, my brother Benjamin, that it is really I who am speaking to you. And the last verse, tell my father about all the honor accorded me in Egypt and about everything you have seen and bring my father down here quickly. Now he was a family oriented man and aren't we all? We always desire to be a provider for our family and you will and you can. You just have to take that responsibility seriously. We're not always the best dads or the best husbands or we uh, women may say that men usually takes time to mature but I guess in our peculiar and special ways we have to hit that maturity to be able to leave a legacy for our children to follow and so the legacy that uh, Joseph has given to his father and to his family has really been uh, a miracle, a blessing to not just his family, but all over Egypt. And if we can follow that kind of scenario that we can think not just for ourselves, but for our family to make sure that they are protected, we are, we are, they are safe. Let us do that. Let us, let us take this time to be serious in life and focus on what is important. And our family needs us. So whatever situation you're with with your family, I pray and I challenge you to make an effort to reconnect, forgive, and um, work things out. Relationship can be mended. Sometimes we take things for granted and we regret when we don't make action now. So I challenge you to create that, uh, that effort in rebuilding our family. Now, as I come to an end, enjoy life and be grateful. Enjoy life and be grateful. The things that happens in our lives are usually are for reasons. We sometimes cannot understand why it has to happen, but it is for us to learn. It is for us to pick it uh, one thing, one thing at a time. You know, and it's we may fail so many times. Uh, we may not succeed at the first time. But take it as a learning curve. And whatever uh, lessons that we have learned, make sure that we have learned it. You know, and uh, pick things up. It's, it's, it's normal to have failures in life. But it's in the failures that where we learn and get to move on in life. Life can never be so easy. And life is tough. But it is in the tough situations that we, we learn and become not just a blessing to ourselves, to our family, but the people around us. I uh, hope that you make your life a living, walking testimony to the people around you. And in Psalms 118 verses 1 
17 and 29. Allow me to read it to you. In verse 1 it says, Give thanks to the Lord for He is good and His love endureth forever. So whatever happens in our life, whatever is happening in our life, whatever will happen in our life, just say thank you. Be grateful. Sa atong sudan na medyo minus, sa atong sweldo, na osahay wa, osahay um, gamay, sige lang. May, may lang na ah, kaysa wa. And then, if our business is not the way it used to be, we earn a little bit less or we have no business at all, we're still trying to find or pick ourselves up from our struggles, continue to fight. Never give up. It's so easy to quit. It's so easy to um, just sit back and say, I won't do it anymore. It's so easy to do that. But be a, a warrior. Stand up. Fight. And look at your family and work hard for them. In verse 17, I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. If you are sick right now, I pray that you will have healing in Jesus' name. You have to think positive. Those that are listening and watching right now that are sick, pray to the Lord. Ask for His strength. Ask for a miracle to happen right now. Forget your, your past. Forget the guilt. Uh, ask forgiveness. And talk to the Lord. Lord, forgive me, Lord. I want to live. I want to become better. I want to become um, a servant for you. Help me in my life. And in the last verse, verse 29, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Sometimes we need harsh words to and to get us back on our feet. We need to have a very tough realization to get us going in life. But take it from me. These things that happen in our lives will help us become stronger. Do not allow defeat. As a warrior, mistakes do happen, but we will never accept defeat. Claim God's victory in Jesus' name. Be grateful and be thankful for whatever you have whatever you're going to receive and be contented what whatever you have thank god that you have that know your current situation is not your last if you're sick if you're struggling it's okay that's temporary work on it live longer all right and things are going to get better if you move on we get hurt we stumble we fail but move on. It's very important that we move on because that gets us to what we desire. When success comes, always be humble. And I will end with that. In all our struggles, in all our sacrifices, always acknowledge God in everything that you do. It is not just your strength. It is not because of you. It's because of the favor God has given you. And use that favor to become a blessing, not just for yourself, but to other people. Be humble. Humility is a great character. Don't be a person who knows it all, or it's all about talk and less action. But give glory to God for allowing Him to use you to become a better person. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God in heaven, thank you for your short word. Thank you, Lord, for the life of Joseph. Thank you, Lord, for the learnings that we have acquired. And I pray, Father, Lord, in our life right now that we are struggling, help us, dear God, to be able to move. Help us, O oh Lord, to be able to come out from all of these challenges successfully, dear God. Lord, I pray, Lord, for the people who are sick right now. I pray, Lord, for your healing to come upon them. Bless them, Father, Lord, that they will be able to seek your presence in their life. Lord, establish that uh, relationship in, in you, dear God. That, Lord, that they will be able to yield and call upon you. Lord, help us, Lord, in the different situations that we are facing right now. Dear God, we cannot do this without you. Help us, O oh Lord. And thank you, dear God, for all the favor, for all the blessings that we have enjoyed. And Lord, I pray for my loved ones, for my friends for the people around me, that you will continue to take care of them, make them safe. Ipalayo na taon ng COVID virus from our families. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. My friends, God bless you always and enjoy your evening with your family.